What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Thank you for watching. Today we have the almighty flare gun back out here. So we've done several videos on these things. Most recently was a self-defense video versus a human torso. It was pretty sweet. Definitely worth a watch. Go check it out. But last year I made a video trying to shoot real shotgun ammo out of this flare gun because for those of you that don't know, it takes 12 gauge flares, which obviously means it will also accept 12 gauge shotgun shells. It didn't go too well, so I thought we would revisit this today, make some adjustments, try some different ammo, and see if we can improve the results a little bit. So yes, it is a 12 gauge flare gun. You can see the flares that it shoots right here. Basically, the exact same size as a 12 gauge shotgun shell besides that taper about halfway down, which is actually designed that way to prevent 12 gauge shotgun shells fitting in the flare gun. It's also a center fire cartridge just like a 12 gauge shotgun shell. So the way it works is pretty simple. It's a single shot break action. You put your flare in there, close it up. There's a safety on the side, cock the hammer, pull the trigger and boom goes the dynamite. So these are about 40 or 50 bucks with flares. Obviously pretty cheap plastic, not designed to withstand the pressures of a 12 gauge shotgun shell, which is why these videos are so fun because we usually end up grenading these things before it's all said and done. But I actually have a couple shotgun shells that I'm pretty confident will work in this thing without destroying it. And not only will it fit a 12 gauge shotgun shell, but this is a 50 BMG. And look at that fits like a glove, so we're definitely gonna try that as well. And of course, I am not gonna be firing this thing from my hand because that would be silly. We do have a contraption that's set up here, so I've got the flare gun screwed into a two by four that's screwed into a sawhorse with a sandbag on it so it doesn't move. When I pull the string, we have a string running through the trigger guard and a watermelon as our testing subject. And for this one, I also wrapped the barrel with a little bit of duct tape uh, just to hopefully contain some of that pressure and give it a better chance of surviving. All right, we're gonna start with the ones that I think it's most likely to survive and then we'll go up from there. So first up, we have a rubber double ball, less lethal load. It's basically just two little bouncy balls and these are extremely low pressure. You can see how small the brass is on that shotgun shell. So let's try this one first and see what happens. Now this one ain't gonna do nothing to our watermelon, but let's see if it fires. I was wrong. All right, well, I've shot that one out of a shotgun before and it just didn't seem very powerful. So I assumed it wouldn't damage the watermelon and I was wrong. It actually took a pretty good chunk out of it and might have blown all the way through. I doubt we'll be able to find those orange bouncy balls. God knows where they went, but it definitely damaged the melon. And here is our flare gun. So doesn't look like it blew it up. The barrel looks pretty good. And there it is. It didn't explode the shotgun shell or blow it open. It looks like it contained the pressure pretty well. And again, you can see the barrel on that flare gun is just fine. So that's about what I expected. I knew those weren't very high pressure, but I'm still surprised that it blew through our watermelon and exploded it like that. That was pretty cool. But before we go any further, guys, I wanna give a big thank you to Hunting Clash for sponsoring today's video. So Hunting Clash is a free mobile hunting simulator available on iOS and Android through the link in my description box below. And one thing I love about this game right off the bat is how convenient it is to set up and get started. You're able to go out and hunt pretty much immediately after downloading the game. I'm actually coming up on one right now. 92% precision. He gone. I've been telling you guys I'm a better shot than you all give me credit for. From the woods in Montana all the way to a safari in Africa, there are multiple realistic hunting grounds to choose from. And of course, my favorite part of the game, selecting the right weapon for the job. Whether you want to challenge yourself and use a bow or extend your range a little bit with a sniper rifle, there are a plethora of weapons to choose from. And so far, I have to say my favorite is definitely the sniper rifle. Stunning views and realistic animals like in no other hunting games offline. And there are over 100 animals to choose from that you can hunt. Deer, elk, grizzly bear, wolf, moose, and many, many more. Hunting Clash also has multiplayer available where you can play against other people in duels and championships, and there's new events every week to discover and play new adventures. And they're also offering you guys a personal gift code to use that unlocks some pretty cool rewards, and it's very easy to use. So if you go to the top of the screen and tap on that menu icon, you can see right there on the bottom, there's a box that says enter gift code. In that box, if you type hunt with one shot TV, you can see it unlocks some pretty cool rewards. So again, a big thank you to Hunting Clash for sponsoring today's video. I really appreciate the support and 
don't forget to check out the link in the description box below. All right, now we're gonna try a 12 gauge bean bag. So this is actually a law enforcement caliber, less lethal load, probably quite a bit more powerful. You can see how much higher the brass is on that one. I'm not as confident that it will survive this one, but let's try. I probably don't need to be taking cover for these, but better safe than sorry, I guess. And I just turned our watermelon around so we can use the same one. Let's see what our bean bag does. Blew a hole in that watermelon. <laughs> Oh, there's one of our bouncy balls from the first one that we shot. Definitely didn't think I would find any of those. All right, well that one was noticeably louder than the double ball and quite a bit more powerful as well. Obviously the watermelon was already compromised, but you can see the giant hole that it blew right through that melon and took a bigger chunk out as well. So it looks like once again, our flare gun survived that one as well take the shell out and you can see it doesn't look abnormal at all. It looks like it contained that one just fine as well. And once again, our flare gun barrel is still intact. Now the bean bag, I feel like I should be able to find because it's not gonna bounce and ricochet like the other ones. And I think I see it. There it is. Boy, that is heavy. That would absolutely suck to get shot with. I've never felt a 12 gauge bean bag before, uh, but there it is with watermelon juice and dirt all over it, still intact. So it looks like it actually fired that thing at a pretty good velocity. Although it's only got about a two inch barrel, it still launched it out of there pretty good. Cool. Well, I've got a couple more less lethals, but I think I'm gonna move on from those. It looks like for the most part, it will fire less lethal shotgun loads as long as they're not crazy powerful, which most of them aren't. So next up, we have this little guy. So I believe this is called the concussion grenade or something like that. There's actually not a projectile, it's just magnesium powder and maybe something else. And it basically just puts off a really big boom and a really big flash. And you can see this one is also pretty high brass. I do not think it will survive this because they're so concussive, but maybe I'm wrong. Let's find out. Well, we've got a plot twist. It looks like that bean bag might've actually broke something in the flare gun because the hammer will no longer fall all the way forward. So you can see there's about a millimeter gap in between the hammer and the barrel. So good thing I brought extras. All right, brand new flare gun and I went ahead and put EarPro on because this is probably gonna be loud. <laughs> Definitely fired. Well, there's our watermelon. It's got all that unburnt powder on it from the concussion grenade. And here's our flare gun. Surprisingly, it doesn't look like it exploded. There's our shell, a bunch of powder just fell out of it. Obviously, very short barrel, not nearly long enough to burn all of that. Um, but it looks like it handled it pretty well. And once again, no damage. All right, we got a fresh watermelon. And if you saw the last video, you know that unless you dremel out the barrel, a regular two and three quarter inch shell won't fit because it has that taper right in the middle. Well, luckily there's these things called mini shells and they fit perfectly. Let's try it. The hammer is cocked. And by the way, I am fully expecting this mini shell to explode our flare gun. I'll give it about a 1% chance of survival. We're stepping up to the more powerful stuff now. By the way, this is a buckshot mini shell. Here we go. Something just flew up about a hundred feet in the air. And that was the top half of the barrel and the entire shotgun shell that got yeeted into orbit when I pulled that trigger. <laughs> Didn't work out. So this is kind of funny. When I shot the regular two and three quarter inch shell a year ago or whenever I made that video, I actually think it did less damage than the mini shell just did. So I assume because the mini shell is sitting further back in the barrel and not as close to the end, it looks like it did more damage to the flare gun, which is kind of funny. So you can see our watermelon didn't even leave the cinder block and maybe two or three pellets at the most ended up in that thing. The rest of it, along with the flare gun barrel, ejected out of the top like a fighter pilot, which is pretty funny 
kind of what I expected. And of course, that flare gun is done for. Well, I've got several shotgun loads left, but only two flare guns. So I'm gonna try the two that I'm most curious to see. And then if they survive either of these, we'll move on and try a couple more. But next up, we have a 50 BMG tracer stuffed into a 12 gauge shotgun shell. Looks like the perfect load to try in a flare gun. So it's not hanging out of the bottom, but it's pretty dang close. This is the first one I feel like I should probably take cover. So I'm gonna scoot over here. That was loud. Well, we're definitely burning through some flare guns now. So this is probably the coolest result so far. You can see the shell is completely bulged out. Obviously, again, it blew the top of the flare gun barrel off, but even the shotgun shell on that one is completely exploded the handle and you know everything behind it looks fine it's not like destroying the entire flare gun just the barrel where all that pressure is contained and then the watermelon actually has a hole in it right there and it's got an exit hole on the back wow so that 50 bmg actually came all the way through that watermelon now Highly doubt I'm gonna be able to find that 50 cal tracer because God knows where that went. And of course with no barrel, that thing is not going anywhere near as fast as an actual 50 cal. Even out of a full length shotgun, those aren't going very fast. So it fired it, but I wouldn't say it did so safely. All right guys, this is our fourth and final flare gun. And last but not least, we have to try the 50 BMG. So this is an APIT round and look <laughs> at how it fits into that flare gun barrel. So obviously these are metal shell casings where shotguns are plastic for the most part. So I'm wondering if since the bullet is actually out past the barrel, if that metal shell casing will contain the blast and not do as much damage to our flare gun as the 12 gauge did. Plus, I just wanna see this 50 cal go off in slow motion without a barrel covering it up, so. Let's try it. All right, 50 BMG. And if you're wondering why I abandoned the duct tape, it didn't really appear to be helping us too much, so. I'm taking cover for this one, boys. Let's see what happens. Oh, no way. All right, we had a light primer strike on the first one. If it's not gonna seat properly, it might not fire. I'll try it one more time. Dang it. Well, unfortunately, the 50 BMG does not seem to be working in the flare gun. You can see we've hit the primer several times, but it's not going off. I think the problem is the rim of the shell casing. So a 12 gauge has a slightly bigger rim and it allows it to just sit on there perfectly. Whereas the 50 cal might be a little too small and we're getting light primer strikes, but I am determined to see this 50 BMG go off. So what I'm gonna do is fasten this to our two by four. And I just went to the house and got the pellet gun so this is a 177 caliber pellet gun that shoots pellets at supersonic speeds if i can hit the primer of that 50 cal it should go off we're gonna try and here's our setup i screwed the 50 bmg into the 2x4 and put our watermelon in front of it just in case it does go forward and i'm going to attempt to shoot that primer with a 17 caliber pellet. I hope you guys understand how difficult this is gonna be. Luckily, because of editing magic, you won't have to watch the 5,000 attempts. Whoa, what? <laughs> well, I got sick of kneeling down and shooting it and this uh, pellet gun isn't very accurate. So even though I was pulling the trigger with you know the crosshairs on the primer every single time, they were just going all over the watermelon, like no consistency whatsoever. So I just said, screw it, stood up and the second or third shot smoked it and that was not what I expected.
it popped, you know, the initial pop of the primer, and then the powder burnt for five or six seconds. It sounded like a rocket going off. I don't even think the bullet left the shell casing. Let's go check it out. And there's our 50 cal bullet. You can see the marks on the back of that thing from where I missed. We had three or four of them go into the two by four, and then obviously a ton of them hit the watermelon. But I eventually hit the primer and ignited that powder. The bullet, unfortunately, did not leave the shell casing, which is kind of what I expected, but I was hoping we would get lucky. Of course, when you shoot a cartridge in a rifle, it obviously can't go backwards because the bolt and everything's there. So the bullet takes the path of least resistance, which is straight down the barrel. Well here, we had nothing behind it. So when I popped the primer, the powder just kind of burnt out the back and the bullet didn't leave the shell casing. So not as cool as it could have been, but still very interesting. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me today. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know in the comments if there's anything else you would like to see with these flare guns. We actually have one left because the 50 cal didn't work, so I wasn't able to destroy the last one. But I love doing these flare gun videos, and I'm open to more ideas because they're always a lot of fun. Again, I want to thank Hunting Class for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to check out that link down in the description box below. And if you like the video, please let me know in the comments and hit that like button for me guys. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.